I'll move now into uh, labeling and ingredients. Uh, one of the top reasons product is detained in the U.S. is due to uh, uh, incorrect labeling and unapproved ingredients or prohibited claims. These are issues that, again, are generally easy to avoid if you take some time. We see the most common uh, errors in trying to avoid these problems, really two things. One is uh, people will, companies will copy someone else's label. They'll think, oh, well, this company's, uh, they're on the shelf in the U.S. I've been to the U.S., I'll bring it back, we'll just copy this. They must have their label correct. And in fact, they discover when their shipment arrives in the U.S. and is inspected that their label is wrong, which, you know, again, goes back to the, if your mother ever told you when you're in school, don't copy your neighbor's homework because your neighbor may be wrong. Same thing applies to labeling. Be careful in thinking that just because a product is already in the U.S. and on a shelf, that that label is correct. The other reason we'll see, or the other issue, is we'll see companies will follow most of the requirements They'll get it almost entirely right, but something in the nutrition facts chart is wrong, and one thing is enough for FDA to say, stop it, your labeling is wrong. It could be the font size. It could be the thickness of the lines. Uh, any of those reasons is enough for an inspector to stop the shipment. Here are some examples of some products detained uh, recently by FDA for labeling violations. And again, it's all kinds of products, whether it's, again, seafood or a processed food like a, a fish sauce or a frozen shrimp. Um, there is a website, a domain I'll send you, I'll indicate up here uh, later in the presentation, where you can actually go and look and see what products and from what manufacturers have been detained in the past 30 days. It's a, uh, and, and in fact, for the past several years, you can go month by month by country to see what companies have had shipments detained and for what reason. If you are shipping products to the U.S. in bulk, in other words, uh, let's take uh, BASA, and you're packing it into a 10 kilo carton, and they're fillets, and they are going to be shipped to the U.S., and your buyer in the U.S. will repackage them into smaller bags, they'll then be responsible for doing the proper labeling. Because what you're shipping to the U.S. in bulk is not going to be seen by the U.S. consumer. They're going to be repackaged. And so your importer then will be responsible for making sure that the labeling requirements are met. So on a master cart, and if you're shipping over again products in bulk, uh, you want to make sure that you have put some basic information in English, the common name of the product, the Latin name, the gross weight, the net weight, the country of origin, the name of the manufacturer and address, a lot or tracking number. Uh, there are no actual requirements for what must be on the MasterCard for products that are going to be repackaged in the U.S. But these are some of the minimum things you do want to indicate. Because inspectors, again, they will, they want to know what's in the box without having to open it, and you really should have all of that information as a minimum on the outside of the master cards. Now, if you're selling products that are going to be uh, sold and uh, directly to a consumer, so if a consumer will see the product labeling that you're producing here in Vietnam, then it's an entirely different situation. The requirements are much uh, more stringent. There are two basic panels, the principal display panel, which is generally, again, the front of the package, and then the information panel, which has uh, things like the ingredients and the manufacturer's details and things like that. So why, uh, why does FDA care about this uh, as far as uh, being so strict on labeling and the format and all of that? Well, one reason is for comparison. Consumers in the U.S. want to be able to compare products, to look at things like the fat content or the sodium content, and it's impossible to do that if you have two products that have entirely different labeling uh, formats. And, and uh, uh, So one reason is, again, standardization for comparison so that health benefits between products can be uh, looked at. The principal display panel, that's the front. 
that the consumer will view typically first. There are two required elements, the statement of identity and the net contents declaration. The net contents declaration must be both in metric and in uh, standard US measurement. So ounces or pounds, for example. The information panel, panel immediately to the right, is uh, typically, again, where you will, that's the panel, you'll see usually on the back or on the side of the product, depending on the shape. Uh, and there are three elements that should appear on the information panel. The nutrition facts chart, an ingredients list, and a manufacturer's identity. Here's an example of a facts chart, and as you can see, there are specific requirements for font size and for the point rule size, the thickness of the lines separating the various elements. Of course, everything doesn't come in a neat little box. You may produce, a, a, let's say, a noodle a product that is long or a different shape or a round uh, container. There are different formats that can be used to take into account different shapes of containers. Serving size is required. Um, it's basically uh, um, that's the amount customarily eaten at one time. And then based on that, uh, you calculate the food's uh, nutrient content. Uh, and again, it's, uh, there, are, there are actually 139 FDA food regulated uh, product categories for calculating serving sizes. The ingredient list uh, has to come immediately after the nutrition facts chart, uh, a certain size, and the ingredients have to be listed in descending order of predominance by weight. Be cautious if you are using products that have a colorant. If you're exporting to Europe, they use the, the E denominations for colorants. In the US, we actually state the colorant name. Manufacturer's identity then must also appear. Um, and if you're not the actual manufacturer, then you have to use a qualifying phrase. So manufactured for or distributed by, again, has to be a certain size and has to have a certain amount of information, uh, address information. Country of origin, there is a requirement to indicate the country of origin. Uh, it must be um, predominantly displayed, conspicuous, uh, and statements such as product of Vietnam or made in Vietnam are uh, acceptable. There was a new trans fat law that was enacted so if you have a product that has trans fat in it, you will have to indicate that on your product label as well. Uh, food allergens, there are allergens, uh, allergies, uh, products that can cause allergies, eight major food groups, milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans, they account for about 90% of all allergens. So if you have a product that has allergens in it, you will need to uh, declare those on your labeling as well. Bilingual labeling, um, all labels must be in English. However, you may also have a label in additional languages. A bilingual or trilingual label is perfectly acceptable to FDA. The main thing to remember is that if you indicate any phrase or word in Vietnamese, you are then required to translate the entire label into Vietnamese. So anything that you have, uh, if it's written in English and you just translate a couple of the words into Vietnamese, FDA requires the entire label then be translated also into Vietnamese. You can't just pick and choose what phrases you want to say in Vietnamese. Fact charts can be a uh, single one fact chart or it can be um, actually uh, separate fact charts, one in Vietnamese, one in English, for example. 